All right, guys, so here is my harvest. Yes, I did get a little wounded. It's okay. But like I said, this is three days after my wife just came out here and completely picked the entire plant. And this is still a decent couple cups of raspberries that we're gonna, I'd love to make this into a pint, but the reality is, is that we'll probably all eat them before I even get a chance to do that. So now if you just look at my blackberry plant, I'll try to bring you in a lot closer. It certainly does look like a raspberry plant because every berry that's on there is pretty much either bright red or bright red turning purple. So I'm gonna leave the rest of these to harvest later on. So within a day or maybe two or three, I'm gonna have this many or maybe even twice as many blackberries. I am finally at the stage where I'm confident enough in my ability to grow prune and treat and care for a blackberry plant that i think i'm going to try to go out and find some thornless varieties uh some erect thornless and i might take over uh a bigger plot of this land back here and uh and have some more so maybe next year or the year after that i can have a glut and then this way i can make jams and i can preserve them and i can share them with my friends at work and and my family uh and and everybody else that would be uh a really great experience so thank you now let's just get to the video on what i've learned in the last 10 to 15 years about growing blackberries Hey everyone, welcome back to Garden State Growing. My name is Eric. <clears throat> Today, we are standing in front of uh, not the oldest, but one of the oldest plants that I have in my garden that has been growing back year after year after year after year. Behind me here, I have my beautiful um, blackberry bush, but it always wasn't <laughs> that beautiful. It always didn't produce that much. I put this in, I'm pretty sure, 15 years ago, 10 to 15 years ago, I think. Um, the first year I got it, I got nothing. The second year came around and I got this amazing harvest out of it. And then the third year, it... Uh, started to dwindle just a little bit by the fourth year it was dwindling a lot this bush had become uh just massively overgrown matter of fact this entire corner that we are standing in here all the way up to where the camera is was one big uh blackberry bramble and these guys have extremely sharp thorns i mean these things are shark teeth uh they're worse than uh rose thorns if you ask me uh rose thorns are at least not nearly as uh hypodermic as these are so it became a real struggle to even pick the berries or i mean it was growing into my neighbor's yard it was growing out to the street covering the sidewalk uh people were going to get hurt the township i'm pretty sure was not happy about it uh and so i had to make a decision i was like um i'm either going to dig this entire thing up and get rid of it or burn it or you know and then uh for whatever reason, I decided, you know what, I'm going to try to take care of this plant. And I cut it all back all the way down to the ground and said, if it doesn't survive, it doesn't survive. Uh, but we'll see what happens. And once again, the next year came and uh, I got a lot of growth, but I didn't get a lot of blackberries. And I said, all right. And I let it go again. And the next year new growth came up and then the growth from last year produced this 
horde of blackberries and um, like a light bulb went off in my head and I said you know uh, wow cutting these plants back is really making a difference so you know I know what you're gonna say I had been gardening for almost 10 years already um, how could I have a garden almost 10 years and not really know how to garden properly I mean well I'll tell you the first reason was just plain old arrogance you know um, I needed to do things on my own not necessarily my way but on my own um, I didn't like accepting help from other people um, I liked counting on my instinct, experience, um, and intelligence to try to accomplish things, and uh, it became very difficult because anytime anybody gave me a success a suggestion, I would just really. I. It's not that I want. It's not that I intentionally wanted to ignore their suggestion i was like um don't tell me the spoiler at the end of the movie i don't want to hear it i don't want to hear it i don't want to hear it. you know what i mean it was like one of those things that i just i wanted to experience for myself um and i didn't want to cheat by having everybody else give me the answers uh so you know you you make a, a of that as as what you will um, the second reason is that YouTube just wasn't around uh, like it is today. Uh, even in YouTube's infancy, uh, there weren't, even though there was a lot of channels going on uh, and getting popular, there weren't very many gardening channels back then that I could really lean on for tips and tricks. So, like, the ease of... Um, you know, just clicking on a button saying, hey, I want to learn how to grow blackberries, you can, you know, you can find a lot of information that will probably give you a decent, uh, successful first year or second year, and then after that, uh, you'll start relying on your experience and uh, being able to read the plants and see what they need um, just because you had those one or two or three years of experience uh, growing successfully using the tips that you find from people on the internet. So uh, I'm just saying that because I want to just shout out and thank all the people on the internet that have inspired me. Um, Mark from Self Sufficient Me. Um, he's from Australia. I absolutely love his channel, even though I can barely follow his gardening advice because he just lives in such a drastic, uh, different uh, area. He lives in the tropics of Australia. It's extremely difficult for me to, when he says winter, he's talking about summer or I, I just can't you know transfer that over uh then there's james prigioni okay and he is a uh, um i forget what what channel it's called uh, uh, but uh if you just type in james prigioni i'll put a link in the description or, or up on the screen uh he does back to eden garden permaculture uh it's very his accomplishments are just out of this world uh Luke from MI Gardener. Matter of fact, he's uh, one of the people that I get most of my seeds from. He has a plethora of just information um, about timing and fertilizers and sun and and you know everything else. He's he's on point. If you got a notepad and you wrote down all his little tips, uh, it would give you a really really good start on the season. Um, so the ease of getting tips from people I didn't know and I didn't have an agenda with was the key. You know, they really, you know, didn't know me like I probably don't know half of you that are watching it right now. Um, and it wasn't being videotaped. So if I tried an experiment and it failed, uh, no one would really know anything about it. Now those, you know, first 10 years of this plant's life, um... I might not have learned how to grow a blackberry bush, but what I did learn was a thousand ways differently not to grow a blackberry bush. Uh, but, you know, that was uh, the moment. I 
caught the gardening bug for real, you know. It kind of changed things for me. I started to take gardening a little bit more seriously and say, okay, there's going to be certain conditions I need to give this plant in order to actually get a decent harvest, uh, not just one year, but year after year after year berries that's when i start to learn the importance of pruning my plants and we will get to that later on in this video first i want to talk a little bit about the fundamentals of blackberries and what you can do to maximize your harvest there are three main varieties of uh of blackberries the erect thorn is the, what i have right here okay then there's the erect thornless variety and which looks like this but just no thorns and there, there's the trailing thornless variety that grows uh much more comparable to a vine even though they, like these canes are very viney they won't wrap around and continue you have to trellis them up if you're going to do or they're just going to you know all over your yard it's up to you whatever so the first thing you want to do is you want to pick the plant that is right for you. Um, you know, and like I said, this is an erect thorn variety. And if I knew at the time that there were thornless varieties, I can guarantee you I would have gone with one of those. Uh, even with heavy le leather gloves, uh, I still managed to stick myself with a couple thorns here and there. And if you don't get that all that thorn out, it... Uh, it likes to turn into a, like a nice little tiny infection on your, you know, on your arm or in your hand or something. All right, so sorry, I had to take a break. My uh, phone wanted to explode in this heat and melt, so I had to take it inside, throw it in the refrigerator for a couple minutes, and uh, and we're back out here uh, continuing. Okay, but you know, out of those three different categories, there's other different varieties that like sub varieties of those varieties, and some will fruit in early spring, some as late as October, depending on what growing zone you're in. I'm in 7A, quasi 6, Central Jersey. Yes, we're talking about growing zones here because uh, we're talking about perennials, meaning they grow back every year. They can withstand a winter. Here, it rarely gets below uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, frost dates only matter to annuals. So the second thing we want to talk about is soil. You will constantly hear me preach a loose, well-draining soil. I say it in almost every plant video I grow. Um, here's where I lucked out. When I planted this here, um, all I really did was dig a hole, plop the plant in. I didn't even fertilize it. I just put the soil, and it was just my local soil. Uh, I had a little bit of clay, a little bit of sand, a decent topsoil. Uh, that was pretty good in nutrition, I guess. I mean, what I found was blackberries actually like a more dense, thick soil um, that holds a decent amount of moisture. They do not like being dried out. Uh, that is a big no-no. They do... Uh, they don't like being flooded either, um, but that brings us to the third tip, and that's watering. I give a constant watering. I check the soil almost daily when I do my rounds if I can get out here for watering. Um, <clears throat> that being said, I don't really see myself um, watering uh, this any more than any of my other plants that I have. All right, so let's move on to fertilizing them. To do uh, is give a really good boost of nitrogen, like blood meal, in the early spring. Uh, this is going to help to get the plant on its feet sooner and create stronger canes and leaves. A couple months later, just as I see it starting to blossom, I will throw in a good, well-balanced fertilizer. Maybe something like a uh, higher in phosphorus, like a 353, or I could just add some extra blood meal to this. Uh, this is going to help produce uh, bigger blooms and flowers and bigger blackberries. Remember, I only grow organics, and that's why I grow my own food, no synthetic fertilizers. Um, I'm not telling you what to do, this is just what I do. Uh, you do you, blessed be your garden, okay? Uh, then in the fall, when I have harvested all the blackberries I can, um, I will lay down a decent amount of just phosphorus. Uh, this is going to send a lot of energy back down into the root system and help get stronger to go through the winter. Um, a little bit more about soil and fertilizer because it kind of falls into the same categories, kind of, um, is pH of your soil. 
All right, the blackberry is one of those plants where the pH really kind of matters. They like a pH between 6 and 6.5, but what I found, uh, what they like here in Central Jersey is a pH closer to 6, if possible. I mean, I achieved this either by adding a soil acidifier in the fall or just a plain old garden sulfur. I mean, you can tell if the pH is too high um, by the leaves. If you see a dark ring of purple which I don't on any of these leaves. It's green right to the edge. There's no dark green of purple like you might see um, with like a sweet potato plant sometimes. Um, it's the same thing, you know. Uh, you get that purple ring, it means that the soil is not acidic enough. Um, I mean, it's a sign that, uh, you know, your, your pH might be too high. All that being said, the plant harvest, whether it was a 6 uh, or a 7 pH, is, in my opinion, marginal. I wish I had a butterfly net and get all those little moths. They're just going to lay little larvae everywhere. Anyway, so now let's talk about sunlight. Blackberries, they like uh, sunlight about 5 to 6 hours of sun. Really no more. I mean, the blackberry plant does not have many leaves. As you can see, it's very, very open and airy, except for I got it tied back and clustered in this one big area here. Um, but they, they, do, they don't have a lot of leaves like tomato plants or eggplants or any other plant that shadows out the fruiting body just a little bit to cool them off uh, during the day. Um, so if they get too hot and they get too much sun, you will just have blackberry raisins instead. Uh, and they don't taste good because it's all seed. Um, <laughs> so a spot that you might not want to grow other plants might just be perfect for blackberries. So last but not least, I left this one for the end because it took me a long time to learn this. I told you the story of this plant and how I was growing it and cutting it back. For whatever reason, I just couldn't understand it. Uh, what I wound up doing was just cutting the whole plant back every two years after it would do all the blackberries okay and then it would grow back the next year i would get nothing and then it would grow back the next year and then the year after that i would get a great harvest and then i would cut it all back and i would repeat the process but the, the problem was it was skipping years of harvesting and it just made no sense um so it wasn't until i saw this one video of this young lady um, and she just broke it down really simply and I was able to understand it and uh, I finally kind of grasped the um, The concept of it. So, um, you know, I could never do as good of a job as she did of explaining it But I'm going to try I'm going to make this as simple as I can not for you But so I don't sound like a complete idiot um, the first year you plant your blackberry plants, you don't have to do much. You just have to watch the cans grow and train them to grow um, up for the fruiting next year in the way you like. Um, yes, probably you will not get any um, or very little the first year. The second year, okay, the canes with the fruit on it, okay, like right here, this is a cane with a big bunch of fruit. This whole cane has a big bunch of fruit. Um, all these canes down here have a big bunch of fruit. Uh, and then you notice there's these really big canes here. One, two, three, four, and five. They have no fruit on them whatsoever, okay? Those are the canes that came up a brand new this year. And you can see they are going for the sun. They are trying to get as tall as possible, okay? So now on the second year, after the canes with the fruit on it have produced like this, okay, you want to come around and you want to remove all of those canes right down, right down to the bottom uh, of the ground. They will die back naturally and will not produce any fruit ever again. Um, this will allow for the new canes to grow and train for the next year's harvest. Uh, if you don't uh, cut these back the plant will just get out of control and uh, you will not know new growth from old growth old growth and uh, It will turn into a bramble 
and that will do no good for your plants or your garden. It can quickly get ugly in just a year or two. I, I mean, I know this lesson all too well, so first you just want to get rid of the obvious dead wood. All right, you approach the front plant to prune it. First thing I do is I remove any of the obvious dead wood. I don't really see much of anything here because I did a really good job uh, in the fall and in the spring. When I do prune it though, I don't just go right down to the bottom and clip it and try to pull it out because these things are so um, intertangled and viney and thorny that you will damage the plant if you do that. So I will take it in increments. I will just, you know, like one foot pieces. And then take it, um, not only does it make it easier and safer to the plant, it makes it easier to clean up at the end of the day. Okay, after I have done that, uh, now it's time to start looking and deciding uh, what looks like it needs to go, uh, but what's still living, uh, what's a new cane that's coming up, and what's something that I should get rid of. Because after you harvest all your berries, um, your canes with the berries are going to look very similar to the canes without the berries after you strip all the berries off of them. But if you look at the canes with the berries, they're already starting to turn. Uh, they got a lot of brown on it. They're already starting to turn very woody. If you look at these new canes, even I mean from the base to the tip, they're solid green. So you know that you want to keep the ones that are solid green okay the easiest way i can explain it is if it produced fruit this year get rid of it okay a simple little trick is when you pick your berries take a little piece of string okay and tie it around that cane and then even if you don't get to it in time you know hey this cane produced berries this year i need to get rid of it okay it takes the guesswork out of it Okay, but I'm going to show you um, some ways you can tell just by looking at the canes. I had already mentioned the ones with the fruit on it, you'll see um, a decent a lot of brown, maybe some green on the cane, but mostly brown, uh, woody looking. Okay, so first looking at the canes, and if it has leaves like on the top, let's say foot or two, but then nothing below that, all the way down to the ground, that means it most likely produced fruit last year and you might have missed it when you pruned last year um, so that cane needs to go now that we've taken care of that we want to look at the healthy growth of the plant uh, see the, all the ones that i have right now are really centered way down deep into the cup of cane stock that's at the bottom but occasionally you'll get one that grows like a foot or six inches off from that main um, stock of roots and you can actually dig that up and transplant that into another part of your yard that's an easy way to take care of uh, some size shooting um, from the from the canes uh, but you could just leave it and just let your blackberry bush grow as big as you would like as long as you have the ability to get in there and prune it back and take care of it with a thorn variety i like to keep them a little bit smaller because they easily get out of control and once that happens, it's really a hard time getting them back into control. So the next thing I want to look at, okay, is we already determined what canes we're going to remove. We're going to remove the ones that had berries on it last year, the ones that are turning woody, the, the obvious dead wood. We're looking at the live canes right now, seeing what we got to do about them. And as I said, I have one, two, three, four, five large new canes that are coming up what i have found is that if i let these gigantic six foot canes continue to grow like this next year my harvest will not be that great because uh, everything is going into this main stalk instead of it shooting off some lateral canes for growing like this stalk right here or this cane right here so what i am going to do is these are way too tall i'm going to come in here and i'm going to i wish i put, should have put on gloves but i didn't i'm going to come in and ow, i'm getting stuck all right i'm going to throw this outside of my yard i'll clean that up later Whew, ow damn 
I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how careful you are, these things will get you. So I just cut that back almost in half. This is going to encourage energy to go down and come lateral. So when I remove all these canes that are bunching up right here that are fruiting really well. And look, it's even got a sucker. You see it? Just like a tomato plant. You got the main stem, you got a lateral growth, you got a sucker. And it's turning into a whole nother blackberry plant. You could cut these suckers off right here and just transplant them and have more blackberry bushes. But I do not want any more thorned demon trees in my yard, regardless of how good the blackberries taste. Ow. You just can't get in there. Here, I'm going to cut this one up here. You know what? I'll get gloves later. Oh, this is see obvious dead wood. I don't know where that came from. It was hiding in there. This little guy right here. That's gone. Ow, even the leaves, damn it. Let me show you this. I got to show you this. This is just the leaf of the plant, okay? And if you look at the spine on the back, can you see that? Is it in focus? The spine on the back of the leaf has thorns in it. And they'll get you too. I mean, this whole plant is just covered in thorns. I'm going to have to go outside the fence to take care of that. And that's it. I mean, it's an exhaustive video, but I talked about uh, planting soil, uh, dense soil, holds a lot of moisture, don't let it dry out. Uh, pH needs to be closer to 6, 6.5. Sunlight, 5 to 6 hours. Any more than that, you'll end up with raisins. It does not like that. You might have to shade it out. Uh, I don't, eh, and everything else and a little bit of history of how I came to gardening. Uh, so that is it for now. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, go right ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, and uh, don't forget to hit that little notification bell. Uh, that'll you know inform you every time I put out a new video. Because uh, sometimes just being subscribed to somebody doesn't really mean that you're going to get a notification. So... If you really like this video, go right ahead and share this with your friends and your family. Share it to your own timeline so your friends and family could see it on that. I want to talk a little bit about something uh, that has nothing to do with gardening, and that is my attire today. My entire, you can't see my shorts, but my shorts, my shirt, my hat, and everything... They are gifts from my children to me um, for Father's Day, and I love you guys. Uh, these shirts are dry tech shirts. It would really help me, keep me cool. This is not a sponsored advertisement. I'm just trying to say, I really like these uh, dry tech shirts. Uh, they're, they're awesome. Uh, it's spelt with a K, tech, T-K, dry tech. Um, but the thing I wanted to show off the most was this lovely little hat that I'm wearing. And uh, my son Tyler got this for me for Father's Day. And uh, I didn't know what to really think of it at first until I tried it on. And I went, oh my God, this is such an amazing hat. It has this like... Um, like a sun shield on top but it vents so you don't get all sweaty under your hat and then the sweat's not just pouring into your face it has this uh amazing brim on it that you could like i could be like australian for the day and be like howdy mate you know or you know i could just really lay it out and be like i need some shade <laughs> it's hot you know but you know you can i don't know what's this the uh cowboy look I don't know, but I love it. But that's not the only thing. Uh, now, like I said, I am not a sponsor, but this is by Uni Gear. I don't know where my son found this, but it also comes with two other accessories with this hat that I just want to give a shout out, film. Okay, this um, this hat has little buttons to here and to here, where you can hook up. They have a band for. A neck shield I could put this on and it'll protect my neck they have um, this face mask garment that has holes for breathing I could put that up here and snap that on and it also has like a mosquito I'm not gonna put this on but it's like a mosquito trap you know hood so it's like ah, mosquitoes don't mess with me haha -ha. 
Tyler, I love you. Tristan, I love you. Happy Father's Day. Happy Fourth of July. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this gear. Um, ooh, there's oh, and it comes with a little, little pouch to tuck it all into, which is fantastic. So, uh, absolutely love it. Thank you guys for visiting me here. This is the first time I've been out to my garden in like since Father's Day, I believe, just because of work uh and uh thunderstorms so this guard is a mess i need to start taking care of some stuff i don't want to be out here it's way too hot uh, i'm gonna go for right now i love you i'll see you on the next episode